Hi, everybody. My name is Henrik Hartmann. I'm the coordinator of the IUFO Task Force on monitoring patterns and trends of global tree mortality. And during the next 15 minutes or so, we will present our initiative. We will talk about why we think tree mortality is really important, in particular during uh, the climatic changes that we um, currently um, observe. And also we will show what achievements we have so far and also how you can get involved in our initiative. So I wish you a very nice presentation. Thank you. Of course, everyone can join this initiative. You don't have to be a member of the IUFRO. It is important to us that we get as much information about forest as possible. So we need this large international um, membership body that helps us to gain a better understanding of how our forests are doing. So it is really important that we have many people joining this initiative. More information about how to join us will be given at the end of this presentation. Our initiative is currently coordinated by five people who are Nadine, Adriani, Bernhard, Aster, and myself. So these five people are trying to coordinate this global effort to assess changes in tree mortality patterns and trends. Everything started basically in 2009 when Craig Allen published this particular map showing instances or occurrences of increased mortality, um, tree mortality, but also um, forest die off that could be linked to drought spells, but also to elevated temperatures. So what we see on this map is that basically in all forested biomes, we have these linkage between changes in climate, so extreme events and increasing tree mortality. This situation has not improved in, uh, by contrast, um, actually the observations have accumulated over time. So this is a map from 2021, where we can see there's many more dots that have occurred on the globe and likely <clears throat> These are still an ongoing uh, situation where many more dots will uh, appear over time. Don't be mistaken, in some of these instances here where there is only one red dot, um, there is many different field sites that show um, declines, forest declines and also increased mortality. So the actual image is actually much more um, threatening than what these red dots here represent. And this have, has sparked a wave of research on drought mortality indicated here by the number of publications taken from the web of science uh, recently using the keywords tree mortality and drought. So basically what we can see that during these early phases of observations and um, in, in, the, in the early 2000s, there has been a sort of linear increase in the number of publications. So people become more and more interested in investigating this linkage between um, climate extremes and how this affects our forests. And this has also raised concerns about climate change risk for forests. So it's first of all, whether and, and how this builds up a consistent image of um, threats to a forest in general, but also is actually the current climate um, trend that we're observing, does this imply also an increase in the global vulnerability to tree mortality in the global forest um, from, the, from these um, uh, um, human-induced climate changes? And this also then has an impact on forest health. If we, if we do have increased tree mortality, so healthy trees are dying, we would have a decline, obviously, in the overall health of um, our forests. Why is tree mortality so important? Changing mortality rates may indicate a decline in forest normal condition with consequences for forest health globally. Pressure on the world forest is already immense through land use change and timber logging. Superimposed on this is climate change, causing an increase in extreme weather events such as drought, heat waves or storms. It has been shown that such extreme events can weaken trees and enhance tree mortality rates in the long term. Hence, there is a realistic risk 
the tree mortality might be accelerating globally due to more extreme weather events. This would not only be bad for forestry and timber production, but for humankind as such, due to the important role of forests in the Earth's system. Hence, there is an urgent need to better understand tree mortality and global change. Let me explain this. Forests provide indispensable services to humankind and play an important role within the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for clean water and sanitation, climate action and life on land. Forests harbor about three quarters of terrestrial biodiversity. The carbon stored within forest is about as large as the carbon stored in the atmosphere and currently forests take up a large amount of anthropogenic CO2 emissions from fossil fuel burning. Hence, forests really help us to fight climate change. But if forests are increasingly looking like this, with this patchy, diffuse tree mortality appearing, then we have to ask ourselves, how will this affect ecosystem services? Will forests contribute to climate change via climate feedbacks by releasing carbon to the atmosphere? And how will this affect biodiversity as some tree species are more vulnerable than others during extreme drought and heat events? This can have profound effects on whole ecosystem dynamics. These questions can only be addressed if we better understand the causes and trends of tree mortality at the global scale. And for this, a first workshop was formed in 2014 with participants from 18 countries. They were discussing at a three-day intense workshop about interdisciplinary research and how to really provide a quantitative understanding of tree mortality at the global scale. The main outcome from this workshop, however, was that there's a big unknown that is still persisting because global trends and causes of tree mortality remain highly uncertain because yet we are not able to systematically address if tree mortality is increasing at the global scale or not. There are satellites that can monitor that, right? Indeed, space-borne remote sensing products will most likely enable us to monitor forest health at high precision around the globe in the coming decades. 50 years since the Landsat 1 mission started, various new satellites have been launched and products developed that make our daily lives easier. From a scientific perspective, one of the most renowned and well-established products is the Global Forest Watch that offers free, real-time data, technology and tools for monitoring the world's forests. Changes in forest cover due to legal or illegal logging, for example, are easily detected by Global Forest Watch, as shown here for an example in the Amazon. At the global scale, changes in land use and losses of primary forests are likewise easily detectable. According to Global Forest Watch, 65 million hectares primary forest were lost between 2002 and 2020. Currently available multispectral remote sensing products are further highly suited to detect diffuse insect damage to the leaf canopy that cannot be detected by the human eye. For this example of large-scale insect damage in Canada, remote sensing products made massive damages visible. At the moment, however, the spatial and temporal resolution of space-borne missions is not yet sufficient to detect mortality patterns in given regions or stands. This region in New Mexico was strongly affected by a severe global change type drought event 20 years ago, which resulted in a complete die-off of one of the two co-occurring tree species. Surprisingly, this regional tree mortality event could not be detected by Global Forest Watch. In order to detect single tree mortality events, ideally a spatial resolution below one meter is needed, and these data need to be freely available. While given private companies meanwhile provide such data, the temporal resolution is not yet sufficient for monitoring approaches.
If satellites cannot detect tumor size, what can we do? Well, for over a century, foresters, ecologists, and botanists have been monitoring forests, tracking the life and death of individual trees. They have been doing that using the simple yet effective techniques of forest inventories. Now, data from forest inventories across the globe can tell us about the baseline and trends in tree mortality. The information from forest plots can also tell us about the causes of tree death. Under the fast changing environment, monitoring forests closely and for long periods of time is even more pressing particularly in regions of the world where data are rare, like tropical and boreal forests. The new challenge is to move across disciplines and integrate data from the ground with satellites and models to understand global patterns and trajectories of tree mortality. So what are the practical implications of monitoring tree mortality patterns and traits? Well, it has several practical applications, such as to predict and regulate the future development of forests, to understand likely future successional trajectories, and for adaptive forest management practices or strategies. Monitoring tree mortality is also important in restoration of degraded lands and forests sustainably, particularly select the right or resilient species for the right site and climatic conditions. This is critical due to the long-term impact of forestry decisions and considering the ongoing massive global forest restoration, efforts for climate change adaptation and mitigation. Now, can anyone join the initiative? In order to do so, we have established <clears throat> a sort of like a a sister organization to the IU for Task Force, which is the Inter International Tree Mortality Network. So basically, we're going for the same aims. There are more or less the same people involved. The big difference is that also non IU for all members can join this initiative. And as mentioned before, we need a large membership, as much data as possible, to actually gain this understanding. You see um, the map on the left bottom side of, um, of our membership distribution. So we have a decent global membership, but there is particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, I think there is the leeway of increasing our membership. So please join us. We have given ourselves a very impressive um, scientific advisory board. I don't want to go through all these names here, um, but likely you know some of these names and you recognize some of these faces. So basically the idea is that we get guidance from these highly um, competent and um, well-established researchers um, in order to achieve our objective in getting a better image of trends and patterns in global tree mortality. Our missions are first and we have started this and we have been talking about this, the global data integration. So to combine um, different data sets, as many as possible in order to get a, sort of a wall to wall coverage of the forest situation. Another mission is that we want to support and also encourage targeted observation in situations where we do observe high mortality, so sort of these mortality hotspots that can serve as ideal platforms for investigations for in which we then, and this is our next mission, can actually investigate the processes, so the mechanisms that actually lead to mortality, which would then feed back into simulation models in order to make better predictions of forest, um, future forest conditions under ongoing climate change. Another mission that is particularly 
um, important um, and more and more important is the establishment of a tree mortality research forum. So we want to offer a platform where people can actually join and we can discuss because we're all sort of interested and uh, pursuing the same objective and the same goal. We have started a community service uh, in order to um, provide this discussion um, by hosting a seminar series. So please visit our YouTube channel of the International Tree Mortality Network. This is an ongoing series. Um, we have six to eight um, seminars um, every year. The first six have been recorded and are available um, on our YouTube channel. But as I mentioned, this is an ongoing series. The next one will be hosted in October, I think, the mid of October. So that being said, I think we have um, spoken a lot about um, what mortality is about, why it is important, that it could be actually a threatening uh, element for um, the f future forest health at the global scale and that we do need your support and we want your support. We want you to join us. So please visit our net uh, web pages at tree-mortality.net, but also our um, uh, dedicated web page on the IUFRO um, web pages. Uh, so look up under task forces and then tree mortality patterns. And with this, I wish you a nice day wherever you are at the moment and from where Ever you are watching us, please attend the next seminar and please send us an email in order to join our initiative. Thank you very much and bye bye. Have a nice day.